Okay, so this week we're getting into Unit 9, Part 1. We're going to study three different matrix components. The very, very first one is your ceramic, second is your metal, and then we will get into the plastic, which is your polymer. Ceramic matrix composites, so we call them CMCS. So if you see this uh, abbreviation, then you should know that we refer to ceramic. And sometimes we don't use the code, that's just for reading and input the machine. And usually it exists on the uh, documentation, but also just call it ceramic composites. So we make those kind of composites with gloss, fibers, whiskers, particulates, or sometimes we use the ceramic matrix, and then again reinforce with your fiber, whiskers, and particulates. So just try to remember either we use gloss or ceramic matrix, okay? And some of the form looks like that. They can resist all the way to 3000 degree Fahrenheit, so that's pretty high elevated temperature. But then they have brittleness issue. So the r, &R most of the research and development, we try to increase the fracture toughness and maintain all ceramic properties to get rid of this brittleness. Research is really easy and what we do is you come up with the different compositions and different proportions and then you test and then record. And then you do it again until you find the best combination to get rid of weakness and also to improve other qualities. So here is a formal definition, but you have to remember everything except for, of course, your textbook questions because that's the standard this course questions for you to be able to know. But I prefer that you put it in your own words, okay? You don't have to come up with exactly. So they're just a randomly oriented whiskers, ceramic whiskers and these whiskers are inside of the matrix, okay? So we're gonna see the matrix and we're gonna spike something into the matrix. One of them is the whiskers. Second one is the continuous fibers, again, oriented within a ceramic matrix. So now you've got a pretty good idea what a composite is. So we have a matrix and we're gonna spike whisker fibers, okay? And fibers, they have two different fibers. One is continuous, another one is broken fibers, discontinuous. The third definition has uh, dissimilar particles dispersed in, again, matrix with a controlled microstructures, okay? So, again, it's just you have a matrix, and now we're going to spike something into it. Whiskers, continuous non-continuous fibers and particles, okay? Again, what are we trying to do? We are trying to improve the conventional ceramic properties. Constituents, again, matrix, and then your reinforcements, your fiber whiskers and particulates. The matrix and the reinforcement, they must be, again, a very important point, got to be in a reasonable proportion. Okay, what is reasonable, that depends on what you want to apply in application. Okay, and we find the right combination of reasonable proportion and it's very important to serve the targeted application. Okay, it's pretty easy to say, but very difficult to, to attain or achieve that goal in reality. Okay, that's why it takes some time to come up with that. Matrix. Matrix is just a material phase 
of your composite and metric glues, metric binds, the reinforcement inside of the matrix together. Okay. So selection of matrix is based on its thermal, your temperature, compatibility, and then your coefficient of thermal expansion, your CTE, you know, the temperature can mess things up. Okay, so that we have to always come up with compatibility. And it's another thing, but very, very important, temperature pressure, very important to make something stay in the state, okay, with the reinforcement. Because you can destroy the structure by controlling different temperatures. If you want the structures to stay in the state, you intend for the structure to stay, you have to come up with the correct right pressure and temperature and don't forget the two major ability of everything in the world is your movement kinetic energy kinetic ability moving ability and potential energy okay staying or taking a place in the space the ability to stay depends on this very much Okay, so the most popular matrices that we use for CMCs, they're listed right here. I cut it out from the textbook. So that's pretty long. Don't need to remember the whole thing. It's just a lithium aluminum silicate. Try to understand that. It's not the periodic case okay, symbol. That's just abbreviation. Okay, commonly used in the industrial world. That is a real chemical formula, yeah? So you can see the SI for the silicate and AL for the aluminium and LI for the lithium. Outside with the industrial technologies, industrial laborers, you want to go with this on management, okay? Uh, the business financial uh, department will go with that. They don't bother to write this way, but you got to understand this is what Real chemical structure and name is, and that's just abbreviation used in the business world. Okay, then BNAS. Okay, here is your chemical form formula. Here, magnesium, aluminum, silicate. It's going to be NAS for oxide. Okay, the same thing. Here, the same thing. All right, so I just want to point out, out that because uh, some students have confusion between the abbreviations and the chemical formula, so don't forget that. Here's a table showing you again various properties of your ceramic composite matrices. Matrices, okay, that's not composite, that's just a matrix part of the composite. So every time you have a table, you have data. Data suggests the figures according to the category here, and uh, you always have to pay attention for the highest and the lowest. So you got a range, and you know where, right? Um, the matrix materials are at every range, and what is on the sides. Okay, it's always cool like this. I like try to show you. You always have something like that. Most of the data follow the normal distribution, so you gotta understand what's on that side and what's in this side what's on this side, and then what's in the middle, yeah? Central tendencies. So that's all you try to understand. You don't have to remember everything. So here, for example, if you think about the thermal expansion, then you want to start to trace the lowest. So here we find one right there, 0 0.54, okay? And then you want to find the highest, okay? And here's the highest. So you know this, okay, zirconium, and then this is just silicon. So you know that silicon on this side and zirconium on this side. Everything else is going to be in between, okay? All right, I'm going to go ahead and erase it. You don't need to remember everything, but you need to know how to read the table. You know, I've been teaching you how to read it according to the data according to the data where they are, how many of them are in the middle, how many of them are on the side, and how many of them are on the right tail and left tail, okay? All right, so go back. Reinforcement is another part of your composite. Reinforcement materials usually go by the shape and the size. 
and you can classify your reinforcement materials as fibers, okay, whiskers, and particulates, okay. This is your internal structures, okay, and here is your cartoon diagram. Fibers. So we're going to use the fibers in CMC. What are we trying to do? We're going to increase the toughness. We want to make it more reliable ceramics. Because the traditional ceramics, are, they're not very reliable because they break. Okay? But then it's really strong. So we're trying to make um, the ceramic strong and ceramic that doesn't break. So in order for us to do that, you have to play with your reinforcement. So improvement in fractural toughness. So what do we do? We reduce the strength. So try to get the word, okay, and don't confuse. Being tough, right, doesn't mean being strong, okay? Tough, fracture, toughness mean it's going to resist fracture. That doesn't mean that um, the strength is high in order for you to resist you know, cracking or fractures, you have to reduce the strength of the material, okay? CMC fibers, they are compositions of, again, we want to come into the chemical world, oxides, nitrites, and carbates. So ceramic fibers that we use in CMC are these things. Silicon carbide, silicon nitrite, your zirconium oxide, and then your aluminum oxide. So if you remember your table, right, you know that this is on the right tail, right, the highest with your thermal expansion. And then this guy, silicon is the lowest. <laughs> See how they're, they're just not giving you the example like whatever, they always give you the example. Uh, with a range, okay? And that's the lowest and that's the highest and that's in between, okay? And uh, here is some of the example where the ceramic fiber composites are used. This is on the textbook and just showing you the very first engineer ceramic fibers. They were just the glass threads and we use them to reinforce the synthetic raisins and polymers. Whiskers, another reinforcement in the matrix of the high strength single crystal. The aspect ratio is 10, don't worry about the 10. If you get a whiskers or the high strength single crystal, you're okay. So whiskers have like much smaller physical dimension than the fibers. Don't think like whiskers are fibers. Okay, they're physically very different. So when you see the whisker, you see uh, they're chopped up fibers, okay, short fibers. And the real fibers are really long like that, and very continuous as well. So silicon carbide is the most common whiskers that we use for reinforcement. And uh, they usually display elasticity, and they can stay at about 3% strain without deformation, without permanent deformation. And then we come into particulate, so another type of reinforcement. So their dimensions are roughly equal and classified as particulate. So you can see here, see how similar their size and shapes are, and their rods and your flakes. So flakes reinforce ceramics and makes excellent, excellent um, insulator. Okay. Um, <laughs> If you want to play with your concrete, right? Concrete is also a ceramic composite. You can actually put all of your garbage right in there with the uh, concrete. Just make sure you uh, chop them up, okay? So if you have like glass bottles, you can also use the plastic bottles. You can also use a metal chop up from your soda cans, okay? You can chop it up with using a scissor. Um, and you can build fences and uh, playhouse, uh, you know, like uh, any structure that you want to build. 
and you're gonna see it won't crack like it does with a pure concrete. Okay. Um, traditionally in construction we use a rebar, different kinds of rebar. But if you just want to play, then you can use all of your recycled materials. Okay, all of your trash into it. You can even use the paper, by the way. Okay, so here is another example. But you can see right there, where's my laser? So the concrete is a particulate, you can reinforce, you can see the particles inside, see? And don't forget, concrete is a ceramic, all right, ceramic composite. I always lost my laser. Okay, so manufacturing process. So we're going to develop the composites, how are we going to make it? Um, if you compare to the metal and polymer, composite metal is a composite made of uh, metals, okay, and polymer is a composite made of plastics, so these are other composites. So compared to that, ceramic composites has been much slower, and that's because high temperatures are needed in um, making ceramic composites. Okay, temperature is very difficult to control. And the ceramic brittleness, again, something that we're fighting to get rid of. Making process, and then your post process. So make processing is the manufacturing process, and post is after manufacturing process. So these steps are also difficult for ceramic composites. So here are the forming and post forming processes that we use in manufacturing. We have laser beam, we have electrical discharge, machining, diamond grinding, everybody knows this one, hot pressing, powder pressing, chemical paper infiltration, and your costing. Laser beam, machining, we're going to go with abbreviation, LBM. So if the manufacturing process depends on what different types of production you, a factory wants to do, you always have this type of abbreviations of which process to run, okay? And you follow the code, lots of codes in the factory. And so this LVM uses a focus of light energy to separate a shape ceramic parts, okay? And the process that we use of vaporization. So we have gas and we have solid state types in this process. Then we're gonna use our CNC, throw that in, so computer numerical control system is your CNC. And you're going to use a laser to cut shapes, okay? But the surface finish resulting from the machining process uh, is going to require post-processing, okay, follow up to achieve an acceptable finish, right? So again, if you think about LBM, you do all that, and you're going to follow with a machining process, post-processing. And what are we concentrating? Concentrating on particular finish. Okay. So this is just a laser beam machine, machining, okay, used as a focused laser to machine parts. Just an example from the textbook. So here you can see the laser beam. This is your lens. Okay, here's your work. And you're going to move this work. Here's the direction of that work movement. And this distance, it is the focus. Okay. And here, that's the nozzle that you'll be seeing right there. Okay. And your gas is going to come in here. So this part is situated right in the middle of the machine. Electrical discharge machining is your EDM. So this method is developed primarily for tool and dye industry. EDM, now the abbreviation. So what do we use this? So we use this to remove the materials. And since we're dealing with the electrical discharge, okay, we're gonna store the electric current because your electricity is the flow of your current. Again, go all the way back to your structure. The current is composed of your electrons, the particles, yeah? Very, very, very small particles, but very uh, strong, which lives forever you know, in the world and the universe. So in capacitors, and then discharging the current across a small gap between the electrode. So try to remember your cathode and anode, we have only two. 
where all your charges cross from one pole to the other and where your plus and minus split okay this is just the particles so across a small gap between the electrode and the work place the so outside look looks like this so the addition of cnc system your cnc system is going to make your edm more of a style okay so because you can't control this cnc by using okay, it is a numerical control anyway so so complex shapes and special features can also be produced by using this metrical discharge machine okay so if you think about edm you have to at least know we're dealing with complex shapes yeah special features and again study electricity you have the whole different classes to study electric circuits okay otherwise you will never become an industrial technologist you have to master this subject all of us know how to break circuits make circuits how to flow it how to trap the data internet is nothing to industrial technology because if you know the flow you know how to stop it how to how to interrupt it how to intercept it right it's not that difficult even if we can't see it okay so a is a diagram of this guy showing you the edm process you don't need to remember everything nobody's asking you to redraw the whole thing but you definitely need to read and understand how it looks like okay so here is your positive and your negative electrodes are right there you have your dielectric fluid inside okay that's your work here is your power supply because our control is electricity so that's where you definitely need your power supply and your controls right there and we are running the cnc don't forget that and then your filler your pump the same thing here is your dielectric fluid reservoir and then we're going to do our work right in this chamber and b is showing you something inside so you see an arc or a spark from the electrode okay right here cause the work to erode since we're dealing with a very very strong okay even if these are like showing you with the minus and plus you know when they move okay things can happen so what are we doing we're changing the shape changing the shape and we now know this this um connection between the smallest thing inside of you and if we can control we can control everything that you can see outside yeah so therefore this is one of them so when you go inside see so your work right there your electro right there so right here and then right there is here that's what's going on inside yeah spark discharge and here is your little thing that we always draw with the little dots moving around so when we get to that level of life there is nothing but them moving 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 when they move you got heat yeah moving 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 when they move and we measure we got temperature moving 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 every time they move they collide something and there goes your change yeah so here is your crater and here's a molten metal here is a molten electrode material how easy it is right to control everything okay so let's go to the next diamond grinding that's everybody like outside yeah? so if you're in the uh, uh, nearest is going to be um, diamond grinding is a spinning abrasive wheel that you should be able to recognize this kind of wheel okay if you go what we have here is a lows i think so but then you can go there they definitely have uh, some of them there so the spinning here abrasive we are dangerous very very dangerous you need protection like your glove and your your eyeglasses okay yeah, protection glass not, not the regular glass is a move across the part you, know, you need definitely need to equip yourself with safety to protect yourself by using these machine so improved surface finishes are being achieved by increasing the rotating speed again it's very very dangerous okay people get hurt incredible amount of injuries can happen so therefore safety again safety is so important in diamond grinding so by bonding the diamonds with a raisin we're going to bond the diamond with raisin and we call that raisin the friable 
okay and this variable they can uh, they can crumble okay so that's what we use to grind so why do we grind because we want improved surface finishes so the diamond binding material again bonded with a highly friable resin causes again new sharp edges to be exposed continuously okay so try to get grinding making finishes using the diamond's wheels and those wheels okay so what are we doing boning the diamond with a raisin what do we call that raisin of rival so why do we use this because they easily crumble okay all right next one so this is another textbook diagram then we have again the very upper diagram is the width the depth Okay, here is your width, here is your depth, which is your height, spacing for your surface quality. Surface is a big thing. Yeah? Right now, we differentiate surface, the study of the surface over there on the uh, industrial engineering part. So we have industrial engineering and then industrial engineering technology. Okay? Um, industrial engineering technology is overlap with industrial technology. So they're all together, but they're connected. They just overlap. And the jobs are kind of confusing sometimes, so it depends on um, the number of staff there. And if they don't have anybody, then even though you are IT, you still have to do um, the IE job. Okay, so IE sometimes also control the IT or IAT jobs. Okay, so that just go very confusing in some of the company, and that's because of the staff. All right, um, number of staff. All the staff capacity okay here we go so how surface quality is uh, specified on a drawing in microns so this is just showing you the surface quality and uh, we are getting into mathematics to see how it goes so we take a look at the wave venus height and the roughness height and this this one is your finished surface and here are the numbers for the roughness width and this one is a roughness width cut off and here is your waviness width okay but of course you don't have to know everything um, for you right now you just concentrate okay here is your surface it depends on the width it depends on the height we're dealing with two major factors one is the roughness and the other one is the waviness okay in order for us to get the improved surface finish yeah. If you get at least that, you're okay. This is the engineering part. All right. So powder processing is your PP. So it involves the mixing. So you're going to mix a fine ceramic powders. And we're going to apply the force to create a composite. So the powders are made using a variety of cold forming operations, including um, your cold isostatic pressing and your tape casting the extrusion, compression molding, and injection molding. Okay, these are just the processes that we use in powder processing. So once the powders are formed, final consolidation and densification takes place at higher temperature to shape them. So here are the processes used for this purpose, okay, shaping purposes, centering your hold and directional pressing, and hot isostatic pressing. So pay attention to this, okay, on um, two of them. So this is in a powder pressing processing room. This process are used when we make the powders. These processes are used in a powder processing. Even though we use the word powder processing, it can be confusing, okay? Making the powders, we are gonna use that. And for making the powders, you're going to use cold forming okay, operations. Cold forming operations are your cold isostatic pressing, tape casting, extrusion, compression, and injection. We are making the powders okay, for the composite. This way, so once the powders are formed, we're going to get into consolidation and densification okay, at higher temperature. 
and we use centering and hold and directional pressing and hold isostatic pressing. I have to mention that because a lot of the students make a mistake and always give me that for powder processing, right? This is uh, manufacturing of the powders. That is the processes that we use after the powders are formed. And they both, yes, under the power processing, but um, at different stages, okay? All right. Then we get into hot pressing, your HP, just a type of molding process. And we're going to combine forming and firing. So in this process, the powders are heated to center your temperature. And then we're going to press together in a die. Okay, die is just a mold the chamber. So this process is slow, but creates a very dense product with um, really good strength, okay, superior strength. So a high temperature forming method used for forming advanced ceramic is your HIP, which is your hot isostatic pressing. Okay, this is just hot press pressing. In this, you can see there is a little I because we change the method. Okay isostatic pressing, okay? So what's significant about this hot process is that this process is slow, but it definitely create a high strength product. And don't forget that. Okay, and this one is um, from the textbook diagram showing you a typical setup for your hot press. So hot pressing, and we're pressing your ceramic matrix composites. So right here, I'll work inside, and this is your chamber. Here's your rim, okay, another rim. And then we have our die right inside the molding cavity. And we have our site to the insulation, and your heating coils all around, okay? And then your powders right in there to press. The next method is your chemical vapor infiltration, so CVI. So this method involves, um, we're going to use a gas, right, and put it into your composite. And we're going to do it at the reinforcing stage. So that gas is going to decompose to form the solid matrix. Uh, silicon carbide is a chemical that we use as matrix for CVI. Again, uh, this method is kind of time and cost consuming because the instrument is very expensive. Okay. But it's a good method because all you need is a gas. So we are learn how to control the gas okay, and your decomposition. Then we get into properties. CMC again, your ceramic okay, composites. So reinforcing ceramic matrices with fibers, particles, and whiskers improve their strength, your toughness, and your ductility. Again, major all right, purpose for making composite because we're not satisfied with the conventional right, um, products we have. So we want to increase strength, toughness, ductility of all our ceramic products, so therefore, uh, we come up with a method to put in some stuff into it, okay, fibers, particulates, and whiskers, different types. So the composite, they increase the toughness beyond the conventional ceramic, and that's the reason why we continue to make composites, and they're very, very, very useful and popular. So toughness is increased, what do we do every time you want to increase the toughness again, you will reduce the strength, okay, the strength of the bond. And I definitely, let me like, um, make a mark here for you to really, really get it. In order for you to increase the toughness, you have to reduce your strength, okay? So if you want to apply this little sentence to your life, you want to be tough, you got to hold your strength, okay? Applying your strand everywhere, it doesn't make you 
uh, doesn't make you uh, tough. Okay, being tough means uh, you have to control your strength. Okay. So of the bond between the matrix and the reinforcing material or the interface. Yeah. So this one is a ceramic composite. Concrete looks like a concrete here. So we have fibers in between the concrete. So fibers literally, you know, like uh, protecting the concrete from cracking. So if you don't have the fiber, the concrete will break and then it will definitely fall. Okay just fall off. You can see all kinds of bad construction you can see that all the time. Yeah. Um, so instead of putting just one rebar, you know, putting a mesh inside is actually stronger, yeah. And um, definitely stop the cracking. So those are the reasons that we use the fibers inside of the uh, in this case it's a concrete which is the ceramic matrix composite. Okay, long fibers. Long fibers, they can stop again crack propagation, so it can increase the toughness. Okay, and it's even better because it can increase the toughness of factor of two. So when you spike, if you spike long fibers, you can count it's going to increase the toughness of factor of two. Yeah, times two. I'm going to erase this little important point right there. Okay, continue uh, property. So reinforcement. So from the previous slide, we uh, resist the crack propagation. But again, um, they come in different degree. It depends on what you put in there. You know? So first, the progressing crack encounters a fiber. And that fiber, a whisker or a particle, whatever you put in, it's going to inhibit from continuing. Uh, the crack direction okay so that's how it stopped the crack it's just like the the fiber inside of the matrix is going to hold the matrix together even if uh, there is a crack yeah it will continue to hold so the second if the bond between the reinforcement and the matrix is not too strong um, the energy okay the crack has to continue can be you can absorb by pulling it the reinforcement from that original location. So that's a little bit difficult for you to understand it. Um, again, go back to our first okay, um, step is that just know that the fiber can okay, hang on to the concrete. <laughs> yeah, they're all mesh up like that. And I believe you can be able to imagine that. And again, you can understand that in the form of bond okay, between the reinforcement and the matrix. And if they're not too strong, right? The energy, the crack got to continue. It can be absorbed by pulling the reinforcement from its uh, original location. Okay. I want you to go slow at this step to understand it because this is explaining how the toughness can be increased by reducing the strength. Then the third is a fiber. It can bridge the crack. The same thing for the uh, you want to have a break or a crack, but the fiber is going to hang on to the surrounding material, okay? Matrix material. So they're like holding the two phases of the matrix together, right there, yeah? And preventing further growth of the crack, yeah? Okay, then let's go to the next. So here we're showing the uh, example of CMC, which is your fibrous concrete. So the reinforcement for CMC can break down at intermediate temperature, okay, no very elevated temperature. So if there are differences in coefficient of thermal expansion between the matrix and then the reinforcement, because your composite has only two ingredients, one is the matrix and the other one is everything you spike in it, your reinforcement. So you've got to be very careful with the coefficient of thermal expansion between them yeah so thermal stress can happen uh, during the cooling phase so therefore pay attention to that not to have the differences okay you have to um, come up with the relatively similar coefficient of thermal expansion between the two ingredients or composites to make a good composite so that different causes cracking and we don't want cracking because we're trying to prevent 
um, our matrix not to crack by putting particular reinforcement into it. Okay. So therefore, you must be very, very careful when creating proportions of matrix and reinforcement to reduce the temperature difference. So here, we're giving you the example, which is your concrete. And concrete is, again, a ceramic composite. Uh, review, you pull your water in your sand, your gravel, and crushed stone and the cement. Yeah, so that's your concrete. And you can see here in this case, synthetic fiber, your reinforcement, internal support system. Okay, and that is going to stop concrete from cracking. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start on part one, and we'll get into metal next part two.